Hey, Jim, I'm wondering, does my hand tell the future of my love life? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And that ends our whole episode. Okay. Thanks for joining See you us. next week. Light from Lantern presents Knit a Spell. I'm magical maker, Katie Rempe. And I'm the maker of magic, James Devine. Join us as we stitch together the symbiotic relationship between crafting and the craft. What does your palm tell you about your love life? It tells you not the future, not the prediction. It tells you the pattern of love in your life. Stand on that. Because palmistry reveals patterns, not predictions. So let's talk about love in the hands. Yeah, because it's February and obviously it's the month of love. Let's break it down. Tell me what my hands have to do with this. What's hands got to do, got to do with it? Woo! Before we dive into this, I knew you'd be the perfect person to ask, obviously, because you've been doing this palm reading business for a couple of years. Was it like 30, I think? Just 34. Oh, (laughs) Sorry, I didn't mean yeah. to not miss that out I'm on the floor. counting. <laughs> right. Not yeah, that and, I'm counting. And 37 yeah. days. Yeah. yeah. 34 <laughs> years, 37 days, six hours, 26 minutes. Oh, 27 minutes. How many hands do you think you've read over the course of oh, your career? Gee whiz. I don't know. I once tried to estimate, and I think that, gosh, it's got to be thousands and thousands. Oh, so more than hundreds thousands of oh yeah over 34 years i'm sure that i've golly we'll have to do like a breakdown algorithm situation at one point just for curiosity's sake maybe that'll be like a bonus episode or something (laughs) yeah it's got to be thousands okay and so of those thousands of fortunate souls that you've given readings to how many approximately have been related to love Oh, I would say it's got to be three quarters of them, at least. Oh. Only about 25% of people do not want to know about their love life. Maybe it could be 50%. My perception is that more people than not ask about their relationship or their love life. Because the unfortunate perception is that, that palmistry predicts things, which is not how my method of palmistry works. People are sometimes afraid to ask if they're in a happy relationship because they're afraid that the palm reader will predict misfortune on their relationship, which of course, no, looks at the pattern in relationship. That is always very helpful to understand. So there's some people that aren't really looking or don't want to know about their love life because of that worry. But once people ask about their career or they might ask about their path in life, and once they understand how I read poems, then they'll ask about their emotional state or their family life or their relationships because they'll understand how it works. I see. Cool. We talked about this in the past, but let's remind folks why the palms hold all of this information versus the foot. Not that you can't do your various mancying from the body, yeah, but you can. specifically the palms are where the information's at. Yeah. So the information is in your entire body and it really is dependent on how people read different parts of the body. So there are people that do lipsology and they're reading the wrinkles in your lips. There are people who read the feet because they have a specific way of reading the feet. These are all forms of what is called somatomancy or reading the soma or the body because your body is always expressing itself through subtle gesture and muscles as you're sitting here right now you might be wiggling your toes listening to our podcast or stretching your toes unconsciously you might be pursing your lips or moving your mouth with as you gesture, as you make facial expressions in response to our few little comments or Katie's laughter might cause you to laugh or my dad jokes might make you grimace. And so that'll change the way your lips are moving and the muscles, right? Why do I think the hands are especially useful to read? And many people have read the palms and many cultures have read the palms. A, Well, the hands are right there. They're easy to read. We use our hands more than our feet 
or our lips for almost everything. We reach out, we grasp things. Our hands have the most active articulations anatomically than any other part of our body. And they're highly specialized. The musculoskeletal of our hands just communicate so much. They gesture a lot. And so they're very communicative. They're very active. And there's a lot of then wrinkles and creases and expression in the hands that can be read and that can be interpreted. They're also not connected to our neurobiology in the same way that our face and general body language is, meaning they're not connected to our mirror neurons. And so they're less connected to the way in which we communicate specifically with each other and create affinity with each other. So we will tend to mirror each other's facial expression as a way to create camaraderie and create connection with each other. But we will still unconsciously communicate and express ourselves with our hands, but it's not a way to create affinity. So we won't unconsciously mirror each other with our hands. So mm -hmm. our hands will rat us out as far as what our unconscious thoughts and motivations are. And so that's why reading the hand gesture and hand expression, and thus the hand lines in the hands and the muscular development of the hands can be very telling and revealing and helpful to see what your unconscious is saying and what your motivations are. Oh, so Jim, when you decide to retire from palmistry, are you going to become like a professional poker player? And you're just going to like eyeball all of your competitors to be like, oh, no, I see their tick there. Oh, I see that tell there. Oh, they did that thing with their hand again. I see your second I, career blooming. <laughs> I probably should just start doing that now. Oh, yeah. Why wait? Good point. How do you know I'm not already doing that? Don't tell Caesar's palace, please. <laughs> right. Sorry, MGM. Harris is after me. That's right. Can't wait for us to do episodes in Vegas. Yeah. We'll, we'll practice mojo bags. We'll see what makes a difference on our gambling. And yeah. We'll there. test our magic on gambling. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Put together some Madame Pamita gambling sachets and check them out. Yeah. And then do our own. I think that would be fun, actually. <laughs> Stay tuned for that later, maybe. Back to our hand discussion. What are the ways that as a palm reader, you can get some insight on the person's love journey, their patterns of love? Yeah, it's a great question. People ask different things, right? Sure. So if someone is single or if they're yearning for love, they often want to know when or if I'm mm. going to find love. If someone is single and not yearning, they may wonder about love, but be like, I'm just committed to being single forever. I'm jaded and forget about love. And so it may be me curious to wonder, can I see that part of your hand that shows the pattern of relationships, which is the side of the hand on the pinky side of the left hand, Oh, which is between right underneath the pinky on the left hand. So it's on the side of the hand. That's the side of the hand that if you balled up your fist and pound it on the table, that's mm. called the percussive side of the hand. Oh. And it's just under the pinky. And there's some lines there that mean different things. And it's hard to describe on audio, but easy to show mm. if you were in front of me. And if you're curious, you know what to do, book a that's reading right. and you'll find out for yourself. And there's an example when you book a reading on how to take a photo of that. In any case, so I'll look at the pattern of relationships and then oftentimes I'll see, oh, it looks like you were in a past relationship that was this way and had this pattern of behavior and of heartbreak or of this type of pattern or of past life connection. And then this is the pattern of what is intended going forward. And so there is some of that patterning that's there. The other thing that shows up is the pattern of your heart line. The heart line mm -hmm. is the line that is right below your fingers, the first line at the top of your palm. And it's the line that begins underneath your pinky on that edge and ends underneath either your middle or your index finger. And so the shape of the heart line shows how you express your emotions and you know what that pattern of emotional availability is for you. Another aspect of your hands that shows up in love is what hand type you are, what elements are there, mm -hmm. whether you're an earth, air, fire, water hand, or a combination of those elements. And so that's important too, because it shows your temperament, your elemental sort of qualities. If you're a water hand and you have a 
superpower around emotional empathic abilities and compassion, whether you're a fire hand and you have a superpower around transformation and dynamic passion. If you're an earth hand and you have a superpower around being grounded and supportive. If you're an air hand and have a superpower around thoughtfulness and intellectual creativity or some combo of those. And so understanding yourself in that way helps you understand how you are in relationships. So those are like the big three things I think about with love. There's other things in there with your headline and your heart line, but those are the big three that I look at in love relationships. So what I'm hearing is the length of your heart line has nothing to do with the length of a relationship or if you're going to have one or anything like that. That's true. The length of your heart line is indicative of other things. It's not the length of a relationship. The length of your heart line indicates whether your emotional expression is more quick to take hold or if it's more cautious to take mm. hold. But that's a pattern, not a prediction on what will happen. It's right. more of a pattern within you, a personality trait. I want to be sure to bring that up because I'm sure as many people will default think as your lifeline is a reflection of how long you're going to live, which is also not accurate. I figured not, no. we might as well address this one too. So That's right. Length of lines is an indicator, but not an indicator of a length of life or length of a relationship or length of something that is fatalistic. Before we head out onto our break, could you share an interesting story of a reading that you had that maybe had something to do with love or part of the hand element for our listeners? Yeah, I just had an amazing reading. It was about the elements. So a woman came to me and she had these amazing fire hands. Happened to be that she was also wearing, it was at a banquet and she was wearing this beautiful red sequin gown. She had dark hair. She looked so good in this outfit. And so I was reading her palm and I was like, okay, you have fire hands. People with fire hands are often referred to in fiery ways. She's dynamic. She's got energy. She's hot. She's fiery. She's a spitfire, things like that. She was like, oh my God, how do you know me? Oh, this is amazing. She had really passionate heart line and these fire hands and this super deep relationship line. And her lines were all really deep. Anyway, it was really cool. She was like, you are amazing. I want to bring my husband over. And I'm nice. like- holy cow, what kind of guy is going to be with this chick, right? Oh, And I thought, okay, what kind of person would match her? Is it an air-handed person that is like feeding the fire? Is it a water-handed person who is like helping to put out her fire and keep her contained? No, it was this big dude, brawny, good-looking guy with square palms and short fingers. He was a total earth hand. Yes. Ground her. Yeah. Because where do we build a fire? If we go camping, mm -hmm. dear listeners, okay, we're all going to go camping. Of course, my favorite campground is the Four Seasons. Me too. But let's just pretend <laughs> that we go camping <laughs> or to the beach and we build a fire. Where do we build the fire? We don't build it on gasoline or on wood. We build it on the earth. Yes. Dirt pit. So here is this dude with earth hands, it mm. totally makes sense. And he was like calm and chill. And I was like, okay, so how do people refer to earth hands? He's my rock. He's my mm. foundation. He's solid. I can rely mm. on him. He's the guy who's going to be there for you. Yeah. She is just gobsmacked that I have pegged him so well with this earth hand thing. And I'm like, he can handle your dynamic nature because it doesn't phase him. And he's, that's right. She's always got ideas. And I'm just like, yep, honey. All right. You could do it. And it was awesome. And he's not phased by her. Mm. He likes it. He likes her passionate ways. And he's like slow and steady. And it was a fabulous partnership. And mm. he had more of a pragmatic heart line. She had a dynamic and emotional heart line. Yeah. He has earth hands. She has fire hands. But they both had this really intense relationship. They were like totally meant to be together. Mm. Now, you can be a perfect partnership with any two hands. You just have to learn how it works together. But in sure. this case, it was just so cool. On that delightful note, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. 
Guess what, Knit a Spell fans? March Magic is coming to Patreon. Join us for five weeks of magical abundance as we explore fun challenges for you to join in and win prizes. Complete a challenge to be entered into that week's prize. Complete them all to be entered into the grand prize. A palm reading from Jim. To learn more, visit patreon.com forward slash light from lantern. For $13 a month, you'll have access to all of our previous post history, polls, interact with your fellow Knit a Spell fans, Plus, you get to hang out with Jim and I. We hope to see you there, and we'll see you next week. And we are back. Jim, in your experience, and we've talked about this a little bit as we've been exploring the different hand types and the different zodiacs, but I'm still curious, have you found that certain hand types get along with each other better than others? Yes and no. (laughs) Every hand type, every element can work with every other element. And I know that astrologers sometimes disagree because they say certain signs get along with other signs or certain elements have certain relationships. I have found that it doesn't matter. Every element can get along with every other element. So the way that they get along is interesting. The problem isn't that the elements don't get along. They totally get along, but our society doesn't always support how the elements get along with each other. For instance, our society doesn't really validate the element of water. We don't really make it safe to express emotions. We don't really say that people who have a strong water identity, if they're Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio, they are often panned in astrology. And if they have water hands, these are people who are compassionate. They are empathic. They can sense other people's emotions psychically. They have a tendency to have more of a connection with the emotional state of things. They can feel the vibe. I want to go out with them to the clubs because they can be the a-hole detector. They can immediately follow their gut and know who's cool and who's not cool. We don't teach that's a real thing. We don't teach people how to manage emotions. We don't teach people how to shield and properly own this gift. And so a lot of those people are buffeted in the winds of the world being emotionally unmanaged. And so Mm -hmm. they're buffeted by all of the irresponsible emotional energy that everyone else throws around. And if you're an empath, a natural empath, you know what I'm talking about. And so they end up saying things like, I hate people. I had a woman last night at a poem reading. It was like, I hate people. And I'm like, you're a water Mm -hmm. hand. Of course, because it's not that she hates people. Society hasn't taught kindergartners how to keep their emotions to themselves. Keep your hands to yourself because we care about earth, but there's no keep your emotions to yourself because it's not validated that it's real. So when you have water, that's a tough thing and we don't know how to deal with it. The other one that society doesn't really teach us to understand well is fire. Do we have models of transformation and how transformation actually works in this world? No, we think transformation is just going to happen in an instant. No, transformation is a process. It Mm. it happens a millimeter at a time, a micro move at a time. And we have this myth that transformation will just happen. Caterpillars Mm -hmm. turn to butterflies. They don't. That dream job is out there. That dream person is out there. You'll get it. Don't worry. You'll become a millionaire overnight. And you'll do just need to do a three-step process to be to make six figures. Lose 50 pounds in 30 days with my four-step process. No, that's all. BS. That's Mm -hmm. all lies because transformation happens a millimeter at a time through the learning and process of you doing work that is one millimeter at a time and learning into it. Cut yourself a break and understand that transformation is not hard work. It is steady work. Mm -hmm. So when we take this on, we understand that The elements get along with each other equally. It's our society that puts the pressure on us. So how do the elements get along? Like two opposites, water and air. We think about water being emotion and connection and empathy and air being logic, rationality, scientific thinking. These are like two opposites. How can like the super emotional totally empathic person get along with the logical, rational, totally scientific person? Gosh, those two opposites could get along really well, balance each other and opposites attract. We even Mm -hmm. say that. Teach each other things, open each other's minds. It's also potentially a source of conflict. So you got to be careful, but that's something to know and to manage and to understand. 
two elements that are next to each other. Let's say fire and water. They're not mm-hmm. opposite each other. They're actually kind of similar. They're both liquid. They're both dynamic. One's emotions and one's transformation and passion. The other is emotion and flow. So these two can sometimes enhance each other, can put each other out, but together they can also really balance each other because the fire can really have passion and the emotions can really be there. We're not talking about physical water and physical fire. We're talking about metaphysical water and metaphysical part of these archetypes of Mm. passion and transformation and water being emotion and connection. And so these two things can be really dynamic together and create steam, the transformation of emotion. Mm -hmm. And so you have these dynamic like blends between these for everybody. In love relationships, when I have two people that come to me and do compatibility readings, it is one of the best things to do. And my February often fills up with compatibility readings because people come to me and it brings you together. It's a wonderful gift during anniversaries or anytime, it brings people together, couples, throuples, quadruples, <laughs> brings people together to learn how different relationships work together and what the things to look out for are and where your strengths are as mm. people who are in a love relationship. And love, yeah. not only is just sexual attraction, but what about the love of a best friend or something like that, more of a platonic love? Yeah. So even business partners, how is it it going to be in a business relationship? What's our compatibility as podcast partners? What's our compatibility as siblings? What's our compatibility as friends? So this is another way to look at compatibility and how two people get along as coworkers. I've even put together Mm -hmm. a corporate team building presentation where we do team building amongst corporate teams, where we look at how people's body language and hand element connect with their personality and how people get along in those ways. And that is a really fun team building exercise. And it's all based around the same idea of compatibility based on your musculoskeletal expression of your hands. So it works in a metaphysical, but also a tangible, more pragmatic way. That is so cool. Yeah, I think it's also a good thing to hit on if somebody is not like able for some reason to get a reading from you or let's say someone has had a reading in the past what are some things for people to look out for to know that they're getting a reading from a trusted professional do they have reviews i'm working on fixing my google my google reviews crashed because there was an issue with the address but had 75 reviews on Google. I would look for that. That's one way to suss out someone's legitimacy. And I'm saying that as a person that currently doesn't have any Google reviews up. But he still has them on his website. And those can be spoofed, right? How do you know someone actually wrote that? I would look at their social media presence. Do they have a long social media presence with other people commenting? I would see, will they email you back if you email them and ask a question? Do they email back and answer the question? Are they real people? If they're in a shop that's reputable, they're probably reputable readers. That's one way to go. If you're going to a metaphysical shop and there's a reader there, the shop's reputation is on the line. So usually you can go back to the shop owner and be like, okay, that was a really awful experience. They Mm. told me all this terrible prediction stuff. The shop owner wants you to have a good experience with their readers, not where that's just the psychic, but a whole like metaphysical shop. Sure. Smart. Yeah. They want to offer great customer service to you. Good call. Let's wrap up our episode by just touching briefly on a topic that I think is important to bring up, and that is, when is it appropriate to see Jim the palm reader versus your therapist? I'm always an advocate for therapy. I think one of the best things people can do is be in therapy. Who are you paying to tell you what you want to hear versus what you need to hear? Certainly, you can't always know that a reader will tell you what you need to hear. You're hoping that they will. I will tell you what your hand says and what the tarot cards say. And I will tell it to you with love and in the best possible light. I will invite you to step into your greatest self. A therapist is hopefully paid to reflect back to you and help you do the same. A therapist is licensed based on clinical evidence 
to help you work on things. For instance, we know that talk therapy helps. We know that cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy, we know that these things make a difference in people's lives and have clinical evidence to work. And it's based on a set of ethics that are agreed upon and have license behind it. And there's a recourse if the therapist doesn't meet those obligations in the, their ethical guidelines. When it comes to readers, you don't have those things that are agreed upon. There's a good reason for that. We need to be free, be psychic, and to let messages come through. And there's a role for the person as well. So I think it's helpful to have both. And I think that they serve different purposes. One is free in the way that art and freedom of expression is there. That would be your psychic reader, that you're getting information from a source that is mysterious and unknown and unconscious and totally from the psychic realm or from the intuitive realm. And the other is evidence-based and reflective and responsive and there to help push you in ways that we know work. So that's the difference I would say. And a good reader will help direct you to therapy when appropriate. You have a responsibility as a client to take ownership of your experience, both in therapy and as a client of the reading, which is don't take your reading hook, line, and sinker. Evaluate your reading. Take what's meaningful to you and leave the rest. Just like in therapy, take what's relevant and apply it and see what works. I don't take insurance, <laughs> but your therapist probably does. There you go. Yes. Good. Wouldn't call. that be cool? What if there was like psychic reading insurance? You know what? What it's if just a matter of time? What if Aetna covered psychic readings? How many psychic readings would Aetna cover a year? Would it Maybe be like chiropractic, like, 12 yeah, a year? Or like one massage? A month. Yeah, exactly. Maybe That's what I was like thinking. One, if my husband gets a new job, should I have him ask HR? Like, I would. Hey, how many tarot readings does this health plan cover? A lot you of people imagine? are really hard up for people right now to employ. I think you could probably negotiate almost anything into your contract oh. if you really wanted to at this point. Should I call Blue Cross Blue Shield and say, hey, I'd like to recommend that I be one of your providers as psychic readings yes. to help allay anxiety amongst your insureds? Why not? Do it. Is this like how I'm going to transform palmistry is that it's going to become like actually covered by insurance? Let's okay, make if, that a goal. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube and you think this should be for real, leave a comment, subscribe, and let us know. Should you be covered one psychic reading a month? Would it help your anxiety? If it was a good reader, do, would you want your works health insurance to cover 12 readings, just like it would cover massage or acupuncture or something? You can always drop us an email too at knitispellpodcast at gmail.com. I think most people oh would God. probably be pretty into it. Most of the people who are listening to this podcast are probably going to be like, oh, hell uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. This has been awesome. so fun, Katie. Yes. Oh, Jim, I really appreciate you brain dumping on all of us, your extensive knowledge of palmistry, especially through the Divine Hand Method. And as always, if anybody wants to book a reading, whether it's palmistry or tarot or both, and to check out his coaching packages, you can do so at thedivinehand.com anytime. I can't wait till next week when we have an awesome guest. Oh, yes. Why don't you tell the people who it is? Dr. Elliot Adam, and he's going to be talking about his brand new book, Tarot in Love. Come and meet us next week. Same time, same channel, but next week. That's right. We'll see you then, everybody. Thanks for, Thanks listening. for listening. If you enjoyed the show, consider sharing it with a friend, leaving a review on iTunes and Spotify, or following Knit a Spell on Instagram. You can also subscribe to the Light From Lantern YouTube channel to enjoy full episodes of Knit a Spell and see our happy faces. You can also learn more about readings, classes, and events going on with your favorite maker of magic, James Devine, by visiting thedivinehand.com and subscribing to his newsletter. Then follow Jim's fun and interactive Instagram account at Divine Hand Jim. Keep up with Katie, the magical maker, by subscribing to her newsletter at lightfromlantern.com. You'll receive a free knitting pattern as a thank you gift. Then follow Katie on Instagram at lightfromlantern for even more magical making tips. See you See next, next week. week.